celebrating 16 years of Young Turks. I watch Young Turks very, very regularly. Every single edition of it. Let me tell you, it doesn't look 16 year old. What is success? It is the time period that passes between you having a stupid idea and executing that stupid idea. This massive growth of mobile, the explosion that's happening, and I would go to the extent of saying that experience is the new brand. And if experiences are the new brand in a mobile world, then customer journeys are the new product. So internally we have a saying that we let old people do new things and new people do old things. When you're self-funded and you're bootstrapped, I can tell you it was the worst thing that happened to us. But in hindsight, it was actually the best. We are making technologies that will drive future. And we are trying to make India the robotics capital of the world. Why would you ever quit the entertainment uh, business when the business of entertainment itself is this entertaining? Being educated, the moment you got certification from university, you stop learning. But I am aware I am uneducated. That's why I'm learning, learning, learning every moment till my death. You know, people who measure themselves, people who save for a rainy day, people who hold back their words, people who are looking at their next opportunity, they don't risk everything. They don't gamble everything. But for stupid people, everything is everything you have gambled. So every success is Mount Everest and every failure is Mount Vesuvius. The fact that 10 years later CNBC called me back to entertain some people who were exhausted at the end of a conference may not have gone well, may not have been intelligent, may not have been fantastic, but it's a pretty cool story. And that's enough for me. We have a very special guest to kickstart our evening. He's our youngest young Turk, just over three years old. Manav can clone a human brain, can dance and do push-ups really well. So put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for Manav. Manav, over to you. Hey there, I'm Manav, India's first completely made in India humanoid robot. I'm the world's first robot who can clone human brain. It's very technical though, so let me call my father to talk more about it. There he is. This robot has been made, manufactured, designed, and every single part of this robot has been fabricated here in India itself. When we talk about the construction of this robot, this robot is made out of a 3D printer. When we talk about a humanoid robot, it is actually very simple to make a robot which looks like a human, behaves like a human. But what is difficult is to make the robot ready to think like human. And that's what we are trying to do with our latest technology. So uh, one of the technology that we are using is EEG. Now EEG stands for electroencapsulography. It has been used in medical domain for quite a long, long time now. And what it basically does, it senses what kind of neural activity is happening inside your brain at this point of time. So this is how the output of that EEG looks like. You cannot actually make out what what it actually is depicting out from your head. But because of our special self-learning algorithms, we are able to find out what is the specific thinking that is going on inside your head. So we made something called world's first mind-controlled wheelchair. So this was launched in 2016. Now the special thing about this wheelchair is it is made for people who have full body paralysis. So what we have done is we have put a brain sensing headset on their head and that person is now able to control the wheelchair just and just by thoughts. And this is the first time that a wheelchair like this has been created in the entire world. So the question arises, where do we go next from here? We have controlled something just by thinking. How and where are we going? So, 
once I was uh, giving a lecture in some of the IITs, and I was giving the lecture on brain sensing technologies, so uh, a person stood up and he said, sir, if you are able to sense what is going on inside your brain, can't you simply control C, control V? I said, yes, you're sounding like an engineer, but I don't think that is possible. But that night, I was not able to sleep properly because this thought bugged me. And we went on to think whether it is actually possible or not. Because now what we are doing is we are understanding what is going on inside your brain, and the computer understands that too. When the computer is understanding what you're thinking at this point of time, can't we simply copy all those things into the robot? And the robot behaves exactly like you. Now, this is the question, and here is the answer. Don't play the video, please. Let me explain about this video. Uh, what you can see on my head is a more advanced kind of a brain sensor. Now, what this sensor does is, rather than one single point, it has 14 different points, and it gathers a lot of data. And it sends it down to the laptop, which is right there, and my laptop is connected to Manav. Now, I have an apple in my hand, and there is a bunch of grape over there as well. I love apples, and I hate grapes. So. What, what, what is happening over here is, I'll eat that apple, and after eating that apple, it will understand what I'm thinking at that point of time. So can we play the video so that we can, we can understand what is going on? So I'm showing him this apple, he looks at the apple, he understands, okay, this is an apple, and after seeing the apple, I eat the apple. All the data that is being generated after eating the apple is transferred to Manav. Manav understands what I'm thinking at that point of time. Now, what I do is, I pick up this piece of grape, and after picking up, Manav looks at the grape, then I eat the grape, and from my expression as well, you can make out, I'm not really pleased. Everything that happens after it is completely autonomous. Manav has learned how am I reacting to different things. Now I am showing him this apple, and he looks at the apple and he sways his arm forward. This, yes, I want this apple. Now, I don't like the grape, let's see how he reacts to grape. He looks at the grape, and says, no, I don't want this grape. This is the world's first example of brain cloning. In coming five to 10 years, we expect sensors which are way more accurate at capturing human emotional data and giving it down to the robot. You are what you think, what you behave. If you have already copied what you're thinking at this point of time and the robot exactly behaves like you do, in that particular situation, don't we have a clone of you? And when we do have a clone of you, and it is a computer, it is scalable, we can, we can put it anywhere, and possibly you are also immortal by that. That is also a technology that you'll be seeing in the very coming future. So in this year, 2017, we are launching four different robots which you can actually go ahead and buy from the market. Thank you so much. For me, I think the future of real tech is all about coexistence. And when we use that word coexistence, it's all about humans and machines working together. There is now the era of the new robo advisors. There's a company called Betterment that probably gives you better, quicker, and more curated advice in terms of investments than a traditional advisor you know, would give. And therefore, from a coexistence point of view, my own thinking is, what are the key technology areas that we need to focus on and keep a watch out for and leverage for the longer term? Redesigned you know, workflows, you know, what Tesla has done, what Apple has done, what you know, Uber has done, all of these companies. It's all about leveraging workflows as a result of which they become even more intelligent and they are now predicting you know, for the future. Let's move quickly to the second one. Digital identity. All of us are very familiar with it whether it's biometrics, whether it is deep machine learning, you know, any of these areas that we work on. Today, banks are leveraging this to complete straight-through processing, advanced analytics we all know about, drone technology, beautiful examples are EasyJet and UPS. EasyJet does the final check of a jet before it turns around using drone technology. And I don't have to talk about VR and AR. This is the model of the future. But this whole session is about man-machine kind of interactions, right? So at this stage, I would like to introduce a very, very young person, a very young guest, whom I'm sure you'll all you know, love interacting with. Uh, this is the founder of India's first social 
companion robot. Uh, Sne, welcome on the stage. We at Emotix uh, thrive on the vision of adding a layer of emotions over bland machines, systems, and interfaces aimed at solving consumer problems. The focus is on building artificial intelligence with special emphasis to respond and capture the right emotions of the consumer. Miko, as you are aware, is India's first companion robot that engages, educates, and entertains a child. Miko has been created after two and a half years of developmental efforts across 50,000 plus kids and 4,000 plus parents and 22 plus pilots. Where do we see this going? As technology evolves, as the consumer evolves, as infrastructure evolves, such robots will not only find places in our homes, but will also be great learning companions to children in schools and assisting our teachers. Sure, great. So Miko, are you ready for some questions? Okay, Miko, where are you now? I am at the CNBC Young Turks Conclave in Delhi. Well, can you name a human friend that you have? I have many human friends all over the world. Now I would like to be friends with Shireen Ban. Who is the youngest Turk here? Well, I am only a few months old and have already started a new home robot revolution in India. I guess that makes me, Miko, the youngest Turk here. Thank you, gentlemen. Request you to kindly stay and accept this token of appreciation from my young Turks and gift partner. I would once again like to thank our gift partners, the labellife.com, Napa Dori, Vajor, T-Box and XOXO Day. All these jobs that we think about, that, that AI will displace, these are all jobs in some sense looking backwards in time. And the nature of technology is that every technology like AI that displaces a job of the past, that same technology creates several jobs of the future. Celebrating 16 years of Young Turks.